Welcome, everyone. Today's guest is Tiago Vieira da Silva. Tiago, if people that don't know you, tell them a little bit more about yourself and your present focus. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Tiago Vieira da Silva. Uh, I'm the CEO of Royal Tax. Royal Tax is a management company. We are focused on um, helping, of course, Portuguese clients, but also uh, foreign investors and foreign companies that want to establish in Portugal and want to do their business not only with, but in Portugal. And we work for around six years from 2014 when we established. And Royal Tax is a company based in Madeira because Madeira has huge benefits for foreign investors and, and trading companies and most generally activities are included there. So we start there and I'm from the beginning in the company. So mainly I'm doing this for around six years and that's it. That's, that's me. And what, what about your background? You come from investment banking, right? Uh, well, I, I worked in a, my, my first job, actually, when I finished college, it was a bank. It was an investing bank, a BPE. But at the time, I was in retail bank. So as everyone starts after college, uh, I start in a retail. But I've been there just uh, one month, to be honest, because from the second day I entered in the bank, I thought, no, this is not for me. I want to work with banks, but outside of the banks, with uh, clients to advise them. I prefer much better uh, advisory than just being in one bank and selling one product. So I was uh, only one month in the bank. But my background, if you are asking, um, I like to, to see myself as a foreign handball professional player. Okay? That was my, my most important and, and, um, and strong uh, background I have was being a professional professional sports, professional player. It was handball, but other sports uh, are, are the same. But that was my, my PhD, you know. It was where I learned all of my most important values, of course, after our parents that give us the, 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 the base rocks, the primary rocks. But my background is being a professional player. So uh, I'm competitive, uh, etc. So it was my main college to say. After that, I have a degree in management and economy. Um, and after starting work, of course, I didn't stop studying, but as a, a self-learner. So I read a lot, not only about investment banking, investments, of course, it's my main um, activity, but also marketing, sales, other things I like. Um, yeah, is that. Well, from, from what we are experiencing right now, this uh, pandemic right now, what's mm -hmm. your take on the uh, current economic outlook inside Portugal regarding trade, people coming in and doing investment, although it's kind of like hands off doing virtually, but what's your take on your outlook on the Portuguese economy right now? Well, um, I, I believe it's quite the same in all the world. Uh, we, we, we stopped almost, it's uh, clear to everyone. Um, until the pandemic situation, Portugal was uh, very hot. So we were uh, having lots of uh, demand for mainly in real estate, but also in bank investment, companies investments, but mainly in real estate, we were growing a lot. Um, and of course with foreign investors. And right now, uh, I will say it's almost to zero, <laughs> okay? We are, yeah, we are uh, in pipeline. We all have, all our clients are the ones we were, we start dealing with them uh, before the crisis. And now we are trying, of course, some of them, the, the business were, were dead. Uh, they, they, for many reasons, uh, they, they let the investments uh, postpone it or, or actually dead. But uh, the clients we are dealing now are 100% clients before they start the relationship and the investment uh, needs and procurement uh, before the crisis. So now uh, we are stopped. Uh, everyone uh, is uh, expecting this crisis to, to go, to overcome, to, I believe, we start the investment planning. 
But to be honest, right now we are stopped. So we are only dealing with the pipeline we already have. So it's quite scary because uh, no new leads and, and people, I understand, the people are, are waiting to see uh, how, how this goes. We are learning and adapting to the new reality, uh, working um, at home, having meetings uh, like we are now in um, video calls, podcasts, etc. So for now, um, it's almost stopped. We have no new, new leads, so we are trying to get, maybe this podcast will help us because the world didn't stop and uh, the investments are there even more. We are going to have more opportunities because it's normal. Some people will, will, will fall and people, other opportunities will raise from, from those people that need to sell something or need to sell a company, etc. And uh, we are trying to learn new investments and new opportunities, new reality. Have you been seeing from, from your experience, because you do lots of credit, right? Credit analysis right. and right and brokerage re regarding like uh, optimizing credits for, for people. So yeah. have you been like contacted from people to, they like have their mindset now on defense mode. So they want to reduce their overall credit and some, do some consolidation. What's your take and your, what you are getting from like from reading from the market regarding this aspect? Yeah, regarding uh, credit and, and mortgage in general, uh, of course, we have uh, that skill and knowledge uh, and certification. As you know, in Portugal, we have to be certified by the Bank of Portugal supervisor. Um, this is like a, a, a add-on service we have because it's related. Some investments need loans and credits, it's normal. And it's the same answer that the, the ones we, we were dealing before the crisis, we are still dealing with them in, in, in credits for, for new acquisitions mainly. And uh, uh, some clients, not only because we are uh, uh, proactively uh, reaching them in Holland, uh, we are restructuring that mainly. Uh, because uh, um, not that the interest rate is fall down, they are actually, Eribor is uh, rising a little bit, but the banks are giving interest uh, uh, much more uh, uh, small, okay? So we are uh, uh, contacting already doing some uh, restructuring debt uh, to some clients. So this is one of the opportunities I was talking uh, two minutes ago, um, because people need uh, liquidity. And of course, if we can save them money, and mainly in the ones that have huge uh, loans exposure, um, a few, let's say 0.5, points in the interest rate can make a huge difference. Uh, not only the interest, but the insurance, as you know, and other costs, the cross sellings and costs they have with the mortgage. We are trying to restructure all, all of that. And, and the banks are open to that. The banks are actually, they are quite open uh, to, to, to at least to try to approve and to try to restructure all the debts. And ones are of course impossible to restructure. But we are ready to succeed in a few of them, and we believe we will do more in the future because the acquisitions and new business are going to, to, to at least until these passes, are going to be zero, almost nothing. But uh, the restructuring, no. We are trying uh, not only in the same bank, but other banks, which is curious because the, the majority of the, the clients that we help, we find another bank. When we speak with their own bank, it's much more difficult. And it's, it's curious, but it's true. Some, some, the majority, we, we find uh, better conditions and we can restructure that in other banks and competitors. Because they want business, they want new business, so they offer uh, better conditions to e-commerce to steal a client from the competitor. And that's a strategy that we, we, we use, of course, we, we work and play with that. You want any clients, you want to steal the client from your competitor bank, so you need to give us better conditions. <laughs> yeah, that's, for now that's very live, this type of research. Regarding the paperwork, have you been noticing some difficulties from the bank side or are they making this easier for you guys? 
No, uh, much more easier. Much more, much more. They, they mainly they, they are in general, in general, just a few exemptions, but in general, they accept the paper sign and, and scan it, okay? And they just ask us, hey, please uh, keep the originals. And after this uh, <laughs> crisis, uh, deliver us the, the originals. We, for me, it's very uh, um, stupid, forgive me the word. It's very stupid because uh, today you have lots of uh, secure and certified digital signatures platforms, uh, etc., the most common ones. And they are certified in Portugal. Okay. Uh, I, from my own experience, uh, uh, I already went to court with a contract signed by DocuSign uh, and I win. So it's, it's secure, safe and legal and accepted by court. And some banks, we, we tell them, hey, uh, even not only banks, but in general, uh, governments, etc. We work with um, DocuSign. Can we sign the papers in DocuSign? Oh, no, no, we don't. No, but this is more safe. How do you know, let's say that I'm dealing with a new client, how do you know that this signature is from that client? You're not seeing the passport there in front of you to validate the signature. How do you know? And in DocuSign, you have all the tracking. It's much more safe and secure, but they don't uh, accept. But in general, they are, they are simplifying things and they accept, but you need to sign, you need to print, sign in paper and scan all the documents, send to them by email and they, they accept. But I, think that's, but I think that's one thing that, picking up from what you said, I think it makes it easier when you have a, a partner here in Portugal like Tiago, if you're coming in and doing some investments, because you are le dealing with a local guy, right? It's a knowledgeable yeah. guy, he knows how to get around. And if he deals with older guys that don't know what DocuSign is, or if they deal with the younger generation that do know what, is, what he's talking about, they make the process easier, you're gonna you're gonna gain time from doing your business with Tiago, and I think this is one of the main things that you need to take in consideration when you're doing some investment here in Portugal. You need to focus on getting the right guy so you can move forward. Picking up yeah, from this, important. yeah. Picking up from this uh, regarding rega your approach now, are you doing like more business to business, or it's usually like mom and pop shops and small businesses? What's your like, uh, where are you heading now regarding the type of clients that you are looking for now? Uh, so main, mainly we have um, B2B uh, business, uh, like I tell you, because most of the clients we were already dealing are companies. And uh, the new ones that we are approaching, um, not that we have a strategy only to B2B because we do some content in the website, make some a few calls. And when we talk with someone and that we already know in our database, they are people. And we also try to, hey, do you need some investments by your own? Um, but the, the majority of the clients are trying to invest through companies. So they want to establish companies for tax savings mainly. They want to, or to, because they have already business in Europe and they are a foreign, uh, uh, non-European country based, but um, they want to have a company in Europe and of course in Portugal, okay? And to do their business with that company, you know? So even if it's an individual uh, that I'm reaching, I'm speaking and, they, and he wants to do business for himself, but for tax matters, it's better to establish a company in or in Madeira because it's uh, almost zero taxes there. It's only 5%. But uh, to have a company, you know, and they use the company in Europe like a vehicle and to do their own business from here. So the majority of them are, are business to business. Gotcha. And what are you doing for lead flow? Are you using a digital marketing agency? What's your, how are you approaching this right now? Are you outsourcing? You do everything by yourself? Run us through the process. Yeah. Uh, from digital, we have only our website. Um, and mainly we are working in our network. Uh, I have a huge network. Uh, I belong to an international uh, Association, it is Santa Fe Associations. It's a competitor from Deloitte, PwC, 
etc. And we have in uh, our database almost 100 partners uh, like me. So imagine if that 100 partners just give me two contacts, you know, and we work a lot our network. Um, other is partnerships I have. Uh, in Russia, for example, I have a strong partnership in Russia. Um, and they are, the Russia guys, they are investing a lot. Uh, I have a huge partnership also in Dubai, you know, and mainly our, our marketing strategy, let's say, uh, it's through network, okay, because the majority of the investors we, we deal, they like privacy. The marketing strategy like to create content, inbound content, etc. For some particular investors and the ones that we are trying to reach right now, um, doesn't work effectively. It's better with network. If someone with reference me, hey, I have a partner in Portugal, let's say that you are a Dubai company, my partner, and they have investors. And they, are, they reach that partner of mine for somehow uh, looking for procurement or to, to do some services. And they reference me and then, hey, I have a, a partner in Portugal that will help you through your investments, etc. And then they call me and I, uh, I will deal with the client. You know? So for now, we are uh, investing our time in networking. Gotcha. And I think this is important because we keep coming back to the basis. Business is done by yeah. trust. So if people trust. know you, they keep sending you referrals. This is a big topic. Yeah. But picking up on this, but besides this, do you also use digital marketing and, and other sources of promotion or you just do referral yeah. bases? No, for uh, digital marketing, I use, uh, uh, and I can tell you almost 100% of the leads uh, through the mortgage uh, business and B2B, uh, sorry, B2C loans. Uh, through our portal that is Dr. Finances, uh, we have a, a huge marketing inbound strategy uh, uh, in place. Okay, and in those uh, in, in in that segment of our business, we we look for individuals that want to buy houses mainly. If you want to buy a home, or you want to restructure your mortgage loan, uh, or small credits credit cards, etc. people, uh, that marketing inbound strategy works, and we, we have it with Dr. Finances brands, uh, works uh, perfectly. And we receive around 3,000 to 3,500 leads per month, which is very huge. Now it drops to around 2,000. Of course, with this crisis, uh, people are not uh, buying houses. <laughs> like they were, but uh, the marketing strategy, we work and we believe in it, okay? I'm a huge fan of marketing, uh, digital marketing, and it works, but only to B2B, uh, sorry, B2C uh, mortgage. That's the buyer persona we are, we are seeking with the marketing um, strategy. For the investment part, uh, we, we prefer um, networking is much more efficient. Gotcha. And regarding, regarding you, you talk about uh, mortgage to people, but what's, what's the typical person that goes, the, the typical lead that you guys get? The, the, the houses that they are buying, it's like 100K houses, it's like 500K houses. What's the typical person that your, your preferred lead? Uh, low middle class individual. Um, the 100k house, 200 maximum. Yeah, that's 80 percent of the, the leads we receive. Okay, yeah, are, are people uh, um, low middle class? You know, they they look for a house. They don't have money. They don't have money, and they need they need help. They need uh, some of them actually only have a, a few couple of bucks to pay the expenses and the, the first payment. Okay. They we are at 90%, 85% of loan to value mortgage. Uh, so that's the client that, that reaches. And of course, we know them and we are trying to reach their people. And we are trying to help them to get their mortgage and buy their house. Um, other other 
top clients um, we receive, but again, with networking. The rich guy, they don't uh, go online. Sure. You know, they, they need to see you face to face. They need to know when they are showing you their lives, their incomes, etc. They want to know the guy that they are sending a P60, for example, if they are in the UK or, or sending the income, space leaks or bank stand statements. Of course, for the loans, we need to have access to those documents. And the rich guy, they, they need to know you. They need to trust you. And they are not going to send you their personal documents uh, if they don't know and don't trust you. So it's different. So for the digital, the up to middle class people, 100K, 200K houses, yeah, it's that. But are these not non NPLs, non performing, uh, non performing loans? So is is the is the bank offering predatory interests, or what what are they doing with people that don't have money to afford houses, especially in a, in a time like this? The, the the bank, at least here in Portugal, the the bank don't they, they have uh, of course a scoring table for the clients. But the, the, the interest they, they, they offer and they approve mainly depends on the loan to value of the mortgage, of course, of the house, um, and the, the total amount of the loan. Okay, let's say that I, I, that I, ha I have um, 1,000 salary per month, for example. And I need to buy a house that the costs, so the buying price is 100, and I only need 700, uh, 700, yeah? So it's a 70% loan to value. The bank will offer me 1.5% of interest, for example, for instance. And you, for example, you have a 2,000 euro salary, so you, you want, double than, than I, your incomes are double twice than mine, but you are, for the same 100 case, you are uh, asking 90% at the bank. So the bank, even you, you have uh, twice my incomes, the bank will offer you a 2% spread because you have more risk, you know? So the, if you, your, your incomes are enough to pay the debts, uh, in their maths, of course, the, the, the maths, the ratios they, they, they see and they calculate, the main risk uh, they have is the loan to value. It's a loan to value. Okay, let's say that David uh, Diogo is going to lose their job. I will have a house that uh, costs 100 Ks, but he owns me 90%, 90 Ks. So for me, it's much more difficult to sell the house in the markets to pay the debts than Tiago because Tiago only uh, owns a 70. So I can sell the house in discount and I will receive the amount to pay the debt. So the price is uh, uh, not 100% for the wages and the incomes that people have, but mainly to the guarantee they have, which is uh, the mortgage. Gotcha. And do they ask lots of guarantees and guarantors right now, or they, are they simplifying the process? No, they, right now they are, the, we don't notice they are simplifying. It's quite the same uh, behavior they have. They are simplifying bureaucracies, bureaucracies, like we, we, we speak before. But in uh, risk analysis, they are the same, okay? So, um, mainly they look like the, the loan to value, like I told you, all right? And um, they can ask for an additional guarantee to uh, like a grantor, like your father, your mother, another grantor, if your uh, working contract are temporary. So if you don't have, um, for me, I, I, it's a, a, a non-clever or at least an antique idea because today the um, stability in jobs are subjective so it's not like in the past today people are working here they are fired go to another place they are self-employed etc etc so the, the world is changing but uh, unfortunately banks uh, look a lot to that so when people don't have a working contract 
and they are not uh, uh, we, uh, working contract without term. So if uh, we call here effective, if possible, uh, they they ask they can they can uh, in, in most of the cases they will ask for additional grantor. They will ask for parents to be grantors to enter in the to be solidary with the debt. Only that, but house as the, the mortgage, of course, and uh, sometimes additional grantors. It's the only thing they they ask. When, yeah, when people are coming in here, is it, is it easy for a foreign guy to establish himself uh, with his family in Portugal and start doing some, like establishing a company and start building their businesses here? Run us through it's the very, process. Yeah, it's very easy. It's very easy. Um, so I'll start to first uh, um, tell us if you want to live here. So to come to here and to live here, invest here, work here, uh, etc. Buy house here, or just want to have business in and stay in their country. Uh, but uh, both of the paths are very easy. Uh, Portugal, our open country, as you know, and it all starts to have the, the tax number because of all the, the things that you are going to do, even if you just want to buy something, uh, you need a tax number in Portugal. So first we need to take the tax number and being a non-resident uh, person, um, they have to have a, a, a fiscal, a tax representative. Okay, normally we do that with a simple power of attorney. We send, uh, they just have to sign and, and allowing us to take the tax number in their behalf and we do it. And the same for establishing the company, uh, for buying house. So with a simple power of attorney, we can represent clients and to what, whatever business they want, they want to do. And it's uh, very easy to, to establish a company uh, if we just have to deliver the documents proving the residence and the IDs, of course. Mainly it's that. Normally they don't need more documents, only to prove ID and residence. Uh, and we, with a simple power of attorney, we can do uh, everything. Um, if they want to come to Portugal and leave and also to apply for the non habitual residence or uh, golden visas, whatever programs that Portugal have for foreign people to live here, uh, of course, they are here physically and normally we go with the, the clients to the, the, the tax branch and the public uh, services to take care of residency. But the process, uh, if they have a local here, don't try to do it without a local. I know it's uh, strange we say this, but, but it's true. And I believe it's the same in other countries. If you don't have, if you don't know the system, you don't know the language, you don't know how it works, uh, they are going to struggle. They are going to spend hours, even days, to go to SEF, to the, the foreign uh, uh, ministry. And uh, with a local, if they are here, uh, also look for advice from a local to help them because the, the processes are simple but we, we need to know what are the, the things to do so it's uh, I advise to have always a local person to, to help them. And Portugal beca uh, bec became quite a popular destination for foreign entities to come here is this correct? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. In the last 10, 50 years, it's raised, uh, rising all year. Um, the, 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 mainly the mortgage, the real estate market, we notice more in real estate. Uh, and the prices are going up because of foreign investments. So we have lots of foreign investors here, uh, lots of foreign uh, residents here. Uh, lots of people, not only because in the first years we opened the country and you as a Portuguese know that uh, all of the, non, the, the foreign people we have are retired people uh, uh, that want to come to Portugal to enjoy their retirement and to be here, uh, enjoy most, mostly in, in the south of the country because it's hotter in Algarve. Uh, and now no, you, you have lots of new people, uh, IT guys, uh, uh, teenagers are coming to, to college, to school here. So you are seeing lots of young people that are starting their lives here in Portugal because they just like to be here. And, and Portugal is very popular at the moment. 
So we have lots of uh, foreign people and we are happy, as you know, to have them. Sure, that, that's one thing I, I want to jump in and tell something that is really important. If you are coming in here and start doing business, it is important to have a strong partner in the, the fiscal part of this, because unless you find a great accountant or someone that knows the fiscal code really well, your profits are going to get uh, eaten up because you are not doing stuff right. If you, if you can clarify people around this, I think it's important for them to understand that they need a specialized partner like you to work with them. Yeah, because uh, uh, um, Portugal, unfortunately, we are a young democracy and uh, our uh, tax and mainly basic law, you know, uh, it was done uh, in 1974 and 1975, uh, protecting employers. To understand what are those benefits, you need to read at least three, four, at the minimum, uh, laws. So you are reading one law that says that the foreign company has a benefit of uh, X for this. And then th you have to see another book, another law. So tax is like rocket science. It's not uh, white or black. So when you are studying and, and finding new benefits so how it works, it, uh, it's very dynamic. You have to have lots of parts in the task system, tax books, you know? So it, it's not easy. Even for accountants, you can have one accountant that uh, reads a benefit and understood like this, and another accountant reads the same laws, the same benefits, and he understood in another way, okay? So the same benefit have different points of views. That's because our tax system, unfortunately, uh, it's rocket science, it's very complicated. So if even for us, you can have two tax experts having different opinions about the same thing, imagine for, okay? So uh, that's, for me, the main reason that foreign investors and foreign people in general, when they want to have rela economic relationships with Portugal, uh, it's wise to look for an expert because they can lose lots of money uh, making business and they don't know or they don't uh, were advised, they, hey, why are you doing that? You have a benefit that helps you that and you will pay less taxes. You didn't know? Oh, no, I didn't know. This happens a lot. So it's better to, to work with a specialist. It's not a cost, it's an investment. Uh, most of them, like Royal Tax, uh, work with uh, saving fees in, in tax uh, benefits. So uh, look at, the, at that as an investment, not as a cost, and work uh, and look for um, advisors, okay? Because it's very complicated, the tax system in Portugal, unfortunately. Again, I, I, I'm ashamed doing this because I'm Portuguese. It could be much more easy and simple. But no, it's very complicated, the tax system in Portugal. Do you think the, the tax system will become simpler in the future? Or from your experience, uh, like are people that decide this talking about this? Or from your assessment, everything is pretty much the same? People are talking in our, uh, inside the government, uh, are aware of this. Uh, but. I, uh, I understand them somehow because it's very complicated to change a tax system. It has uh, to be done in few small steps, otherwise it will be a collapse, okay? Uh, because the, 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 how, how, how the government works, and this is only uh, to all kinds of laws. You can see now with the laws we are putting out from the COVID, it's the same. We put a law out. That's, focus on a tax benefit. Let's say that the government decides to give a particular benefit for foreign investors. And they write the law and they publish the law. And then a few days after, they understand, oh, there is an inconsistency, inconsistency there. We have to change. So they, are going, they cannot erase the law and publish a new one. You know? So they are going to publish another law that it's going to correct, to fix that inconsistency. You understand how it works? And this creates complexity. Because if you are reading the first law that came out, and you don't understand that there is another one to fix, you know, 
you are going to read that law and you are wrong. You understand? And that's how the tax system works. Uh, so it's very hard to understand because you need to know all the laws that are related to a primary one to go after all the benefits you have and all the, the legal things you have to do and requirements, etc. And the normal people that read the primary law, even if they go Google and search some law, uh, it's very high odds. The probabilities, the odds are very high. Uh, they don't find the fixed one, you know, and they will go uh, for that one and maybe have uh, losses because they are not going to use the, the right law, you know. So to fix it, this, it's uh, in the global macroeconomic view, point of view, uh, for our governments is very, not impossible, but very difficult. They have to erase laws and make a new ones 100% correct. And uh, go from there, it's, it's going to take much more years, but the government is working on that. Okay, it's going to take much, much more years. They, they are working on that. We can see here and there some laws that were already cleaned, and much more easier. Okay. And one, one thing: why would is there a big difference between establishing their LLC, their limited liability company, in the continent? or in the islands like in Madeira where you are talking about? I know that you talked about this previously. I just want this message to be clear for people that are coming in here. What's the main difference between establishing a company in the islands or in the main continent? Okay, so the, the, it's, I, I start saying that the, there is no difference, okay? It's the same country. Uh, the same laws, same tax authorities. So Portugal has island cities in the highlands are, are, are like mainland. So it's the same government and the same uh, process. Okay. Uh, the only thing that changes, uh, as well as any other benefit you want to apply for, is you need to do an application. So if you want, for example, royal tax, we are uh, in Madeira. But when we establish, we are not in the free trade zone because we are not a trading company. We, we don't need to, to be there. So when we established Royal Tax in 2014, it was the same as we established the Royal Tax in Lisbon or another city. Okay, so it's all the same. But when you want to apply for a tax benefit, like the tax we ha benefit we have in Madeira, which is a... a 80% uh, uh, cut off on income corporate tax. So instead of 21, it's 5% only. Uh, they need to apply, okay? So we need to do application. Uh, they have to pay a, an extra fee to the government in Madeira. So it's only an uh, application. You have to, to ask to Madeira uh, government authorization to be in Madeira free trade zone and benefit from the, the special corporate tax, okay? It's only that, but it's, it's a simple process to do. It's a simple process to do, but to establish the company, it's the same as establishing the company in Lisbon, okay? Same taxes, same everything. The only thing that changes is you need to apply, and then uh, the benefit will come only to, uh, relationships with uh, uh, foreign countries so let's say that you you have um, you are going to sell a product or or invoice a service from madeira to lisbon or to portugal mainland there is no benefit okay the benefit is only if you have uh, uh, international activities and Think. for the future since obviously we are, not, we are now in the pandemic but this is temporary so for the future where do you see yourself and your company heading forward Okay, so we are uh, um, planning and uh, putting in place a strategy to, to have more international clients, okay? Uh, and we are in Portugal, we are focusing on uh, small entrepreneurs because we like to be a service provider. So we, we don't like to, to do only accountants or only uh, advisory on, on loans. We like to be uh, the company, they, they, they are focusing on their core business, doing what they are good doing it. 
and all the, the, the services around the company that are mandatory, like accountant, uh, legal services, advisory, uh, mortgage sometimes, uh, management, admin work, etc. So we are positioning ourselves like the company that they paid us a fee and they know regardless the problem and the need they have, uh, they can count on us. So, and we only can make a difference in small companies because the huge companies, they have their own accountants, their own lawyers, their own advisors, etc. So in Portugal, we are focusing on uh, small companies, okay? And for foreigners, it's the opposite. Big companies, but since they don't have structure in Portugal, we are providing them those services for houses because they are not here. So they need they need a local company to do because they are not here. They are not Portuguese. So uh, our future it's going to be like this. And I hope to have today we have like seventy percent Portuguese companies and thirty uh, foreign companies. And we are going to, to try to balance this and have 50-50 and of course to, to win more, more clients. And the advisory parts, we start a few months ago. Um, we are also trying, and this is the, 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 the door to receive foreign clients, is for an advisory service. Okay, so some foreign people or companies that need to invest and we can do all the things. We can do the procurement of the investments, uh, which is a big part and of course all the due diligence after because if you want to invest you need to have a tax because it implicates taxes you need to have a uh, tax number etc then you need to to search investment opportunities so you need some someone helps you in the procurement after you need the financial analysis etc and due diligence right and if you want to go further with the investments, you need legal. So there are contracts, there are deeds, etc. So and we, we can provide all this, you know, because we have lawyers in our company. So uh, uh, we want to be like a 360 uh, service provide, provider. That's great. And Tiago, for, for final, where can people get a hold of you, get in contact with you if they have any further questions? Well, the best place can be our website right uh, royaltax.pt uh, it's it's our uh, main main uh, uh, window to show and door to 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 receive people it's the the, the best place um i don't know otherwise i don't know if i can tell my contacts here <laughs> sure that, that's, that's all about you my friend <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> for the people that are hearing us, uh, can reach me at my, my phone. It's uh, 00351-9141-253370. It's my number. And my email is T, V, S, T from Tiago, V from Vieira, and S from Silva, T, V, S, uh, royaltax.pt. So, Terry, it was wonderful having you with us today. We'll speak soon. Okay, it was my pleasure. Thank you for having me and keep safe, everyone. <laughs>